previously on Dual Destinies. I think I know what it is, actually. It's the captain, the, like, the body, because he didn't show up in the footage until 10.10. At 10.09, he wasn't there, but he appeared from behind the rock. So shouldn't we have seen him going down to hide behind the rock? Because he didn't sit down there and hold his breath for all 10 minutes, right? The important thing we should see in the footage is the victim himself, Jack Shipley. I don't know about you, but I didn't see him get in the pool in that footage. There you go. That's what it was. That's kind of a different angle. That's right. So they wanted me to say there was nothing important. Because... Because we were pointing out what wasn't there, not what was there. If the victim is not shown entering the pool in this footage, it means that he must have been there by the skull rock during those ten minutes. But no human being can hold their breath underwater for that long. Wait a minute. Are you saying... Yes. When the security camera started up at 10 a.m., the victim was already dead. What? Well, that gets him off the hook right there, right? Like, we're done here. <laughs> of course, that's not how it really works, but... Order! Order in the court! If that's the case, then when was the victim murdered? Well, that's what we have to figure out then, isn't it? I don't know, Your Honor, but we know now it had to have been sometime before 10 a.m. Therefore, this footage can no longer be called decisive evidence against my client. There's a lot of other people who could have done it. You know, this Pearl, for example. Not necessarily. The defense believes that the true culprit may have even been human. And we have evidence to back up our theory as well. Do you now? I would be very interested in seeing this evidence. I don't think you would, actually. I think we found during our investigation yesterday. I wouldn't go so far as to call it decisive, but... Now's the time to play it. Now's the time to play it. What evidence shows that the crime may have been committed by a human? Hmm. See, I keep going back to the calendar, like, oh, he met with so-and-so at 7 a.m., but I don't think we're to that point yet. The crime may have been committed by a human, though. Um, sheesh. Oh, dude, dog, what am I thinking, of course? It's the coin. That's what we want. Makes it a likely murder weapon. There you go. That was like the big thing. What's this, a coin? Yes, a fake coin used in the aquarium's pirate show. We found it beside the pool. This coin is quite possibly the real murder weapon. This tiny little coin is the murder weapon? Mr. Wright, if this is another one of your bluffs, so help me. <laughs> As they say, the bolder the presentation, the less competent the solicitor. Not. Nah, that doesn't apply to me, sir. This is no bluff and this isn't the only coin. There are 300 of these coins altogether, weighing a total of about 7 pounds. This one just happens to have blood on it. Did you have the blood analyzed to see whose it is? No! Not yet. But there were coins scattered all around the body and the victim had a head wound. Taking these things into account, I believe it has to be the victim's blood. So to put it together, we have about 7 pounds of coins by the side of the pool and in it. One of them with a blood stain on it. So, would you like to play Bloodstained Castlevania now? I think the answer is pretty clear here. Yes! Your Honor. The defense proposes that the victim was killed beside the pool. The side of the pool? But if the murder took place there, it would be difficult to say the orca did it. Well, so much the better. I realize you were trying to defend your client, but that theory is preposterous. How could 300 coins possibly be made to hit someone all at once? It'd be pretty easy if they were in a bag or something of that nature. And so where is this bag the coins were in? Unfortunately, Your Honor, we recovered nothing of the sort from the scene. It's possible the culprit took it with them. They took it? Yup! The true culprit used the coins as a blunt instrument to commit murder. They then threw the body into the pool before the security camera started up. And then they left, taking the bag the coins were in with them. They got rid of the evidence that points to a human culprit to pin the blame on Orla. We got him. We got him on our side, y'all. That was brilliant, Mr. Wright. You found a way to introduce the possibility of a human perpetrator. Yeah, that was really hard. But somehow, let's hope my luck holds out. I wonder why Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't said anything. He's mulling it over. Let's just put it that way. 
The possibility of a perpetrator other than the poop defendant has now been poop suggested. Poop. But if we hold this possibility so many peas, then what did Misty Plume witness? Well, the whale probably found the body and just was trying to, like, ask him if he was okay, you know? Oh, boy. She's still hanging on to this, isn't she? Hmm. Turn our thinking around. Oh, of course. Turn our thinking around. Sounds good to me. Just every time they say that, I want to start singing that song, but Nico B already got that one. I'm not going to rip him off. Time to give that old turn my thinking around method a try. Instead of trying to figure out why Orla did the same things she did a year ago, I should consider the results that were produced by her behavior this time around. Orla sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. If the real culprit wanted to shift the suspicion onto Orla, then they would have needed to give people a reason to think Orla did it in the first place. I think I know where we're going here. So you would have set up, like, a bunch of commands or trained her to do it? Like he, I assume. I don't know, he or she. I mean, I just kind of sort of got it in my head that maybe that rapper guy might have done it, but it's that stupid calendar is what's making me think that, though. Mr. Wright, as her lawyer, do you how, how do you explain your client's actions? I believe we should think of it in this way, Your Honor. What kind of effect did Orla's actions have on the case? Mm, very well. I want to explain it for the court. How did the defendant's actions affect the case? They created a witness. They didn't kill the victim because the victim was already dead. Got rid of evidence. Uh oh. Shoot. Well, it's probably created a witness, like he would have seen to get her attention, then do the ramming in it. Yeah, I'm gonna try that one. Misty Plume focused her attention on the orca pool because she heard the song. The orca's act of singing a song created a witness. Created a witness? Isn't it possible that fabricating a witness was the real culprit's true intention? After all, Misty Plume witnessed two things. She saw Orla headbutt something over and over, and she saw the orca bite the victim. These two actions of Orla's might have been... The real culprit's plot to make the witness think the orca was attacking the victim. Are you saying that the defendant was being manipulated by the true perpetrator? Exactly. And that would explain Orla's actions perfectly. But the defendant is an orca. Is it even possible to manipulate her? Oh, that's all you do. That's the whole job is manipulating her. There is a way to manipulate orca's behavior with this. Whistle. Take that. Is this a whistle? Yes, Your Honor. Trainers at the aquarium use whistles to issue commands to Orla. But in truth, anyone can do it, provided they know the right signals. Well, that must be how they got Orla to do tricks for their pirate shows. The true culprit hid the body in a spot that couldn't be seen from the visitor's corner. Then, when Misty Plume appeared, they gave Orla the commands. BAM! In other words, Orla was manipulated by the culprit to perform a series of tricks. What you got to say about that? Maybe that's what happened last year, too. And as for you, Misty Plume, you were manipulated by the true culprit to play the part of the witness. I... Norma de Plume was set up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, um... Not so close. Uh-oh. Here it goes. Whoa! Oh, boy. What? Oh my god! <laughs> that was one wardrobe malfunction I did not want to see. It would appear we need to shift our suspicion towards someone other than Orla. Prosecutor Black will please have the bloodstained coin analyzed. Hm. You waste your breath. I guess even Prosecutor Blackwell can't refuse the possibility of a human suspect. You did it, boss. If the crime happened beside the pool, there's no way an orca could have done it. Now if only we could find the bag the coins were in. 
Ooh. In light of the new discovery, it would appear that the Orca couldn't have done it. Exactly, Your Honor. If the blood on the coin proves to be that of the victim, we can unequivocally, unequivocally overturn Orla's accusation. Objection. Oh, he's for real here. There it is, there's the break. Overturn the defendant's accusation? Oh, I think not. Oh, I am really pissed off now. Oh, he's going. Whoa! Did he cut off some of my hair? Dude, you don't do that! You can't do that! I'm, I'm Phoenix Wright, dude! That's part of my thing, man! Yesterday, a new inmate was brought into the prison. He said, The moment you relax is when you're the most vulnerable. Hmm. And what did this man go in for? He is merely a sneaky thief who enjoys a spot of fishing now and again. But Wright don't know he will be easier to hook up than any fish. <laughs> Screech. Oh, here we go. Oh! You never know where that hawk's gonna go. That hawk sure does love the judge's head. Wait, what? What's this? That coin from before and... Some sort of bag. Did he have that the whole time? This is the coin bag the 300 coins were in. I believe you were looking for this. How did you get that? Because I did it, you know. I never said we didn't find it at the crime scene. The bag had blood on it, so naturally, I had it sent to the crime lab. Oh... And does the blood belong? It totally doesn't, does it? It does indeed, as does the blood on the coin. Well, that's good, then! The bag was open and the coins had all spilled out. But the bag alone wasn't proof enough to say that it was used as the murder weapon. However, thanks to the defense and their coin, I'm more than satisfied that it was. Oh, no. Are you conceding that the true culprit committed the murder with a bag of coins? I shall concede that the victim was put into the pool after his death. However, even with the bag... What? It doesn't change the fact that it was the orca that killed the victim. Really? You still suspect Orla? You said that the true culprit manipulated Orla's behavior. But Orla isn't the kind of orca that would let someone control her. If anything, Orla used the victim's behavior against him to murder him. What? Are you serious? Are you arguing... Are you arguing that the Orpo Orca manipulated a human being? Hmm. <laughs> to prove it, I've summoned another witness. Marlin Rhymes. Take the stand. Well, here we go. I was wondering about this. Oh, man. Well, thank God that lady's off the stand, because I... I just don't do girl voices that well, I don't think. I don't know, man. Well, don't just stand there. State your name. Oh, uh, I told you I didn't want to be a witness. <laughs> I thought one witness would be quite enough to prove the defendant's guilt. But apparently Rydono won't be satisfied until every stone is turned. Well, son of a... Alright, fine. If I gotta talk, let's get this over with. Mr. Rhymes didn't seem like a willing witness. I wonder what Prosecutor Blackwell's gonna have him testify about. Oh, uh, so could we have your name and occupation for the record witness? Is he about to sing? Yes! Alright, 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 alright. <laughs> oh my, I'm afraid I couldn't understand a word you said. Is that that flip-flop music young people nowadays like? <laughs> so close, Your Honor, so close. And yet so far. <laughs> Please proceed with your testimony, witness. Without the flip-flop. No, oh, the flip-flop is fun. Okay, fine. But I don't want to do this, I tell you. I feel like I'm selling Sasha out. He what? Oh, this is but mm, hmm. Okay. 
I will be right back. Oh, okay, I'm back. Let's go. At about 10, 10 a.m. Wait, 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 no, no. At about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room, yo. I heard a loud noise from the pool room, so I went to the door to look in. I couldn't see the captain or the orca, but I saw a bunch of coins scattered around. The orca knows there's a certain spot people stand to play volleyball with her. I think maybe she knocked down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. Huh. So that gives us a little more info about the area around the orca pool. Hmm. There's also has information about the area around the orca pool on the first and second floor. The pool's about six five feet deep. The defendant made the stuff fall down. Overturned crates and assorted props were scattered all over the pool room floor. There is no doubt that it's the orca that causes the mess. But could she really have done that from within the pool? Hmm. As I said, the orca is the only one that could have performed such a feat. The pool and its room were tidy the night before, including its various odds and ends. But when our rhyming Marlin checked on the scene, over 400 pounds of props had fallen. To move it all in one go would challenge even the brawny prisoner in the cell next to mine. <laughs> More prisoner talk. What is he, the jail gossip? I mean, maybe. So how did 400 pounds of items all fall at once? I'll tell you how. The orca pulled on the cloth that was underneath him. Ah, oh, okay. Child's play. Yeah, well. <laughs> During a friendly game of volleyball, the defendant made the crates fall. And the bag of coins that was among the items fell on the victim's head and killed him. The orca then toyed with the victim's body underwater, which is what Misty Plume saw. Objection! That's... But the witness only said he heard a loud noise. That doesn't automatically make it the sound of Orla making the items fall. Also, why did you only look in on the pool room anyway, Miss Rhymes? Mr. Rhymes? <laughs> that orca sometimes makes a loud noise to summon her trainer. But I'm still a newbie, so I don't have a security card to get into the pool room yet. So even if she tries to summon somebody, there ain't much I can do about it. I see. So the witness couldn't enter the crime scene. Objection! Are you sure? Boy, Phoenix is sharp on the objections here. If Mr. Rhymes couldn't enter the room, there's at least one thing he can't be sure about. His statement that the orca was playing volleyball is pure speculation, yo. Silence. Look what you're doing to me, you're making me say it now. Whether the orca was actually playing volleyball or not is not the issue, yo. Oh, not me too. Traces of the orca's saliva were found in the cloth that was underneath the crates. The important part is that the orca is the only one that could have moved the items. Oh, crap. Is that how we... If I don't, I mean that Orla was the culprit, even if the victim died beside the pool. Yeah, but it wouldn't be... Like, first of all, even if a human did that, it wouldn't be intentional. It would be an accident. Oh my god, dude. But whatever. At about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room. I don't know what to do with this. 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room. Let me just look over it again. I heard a loud noise from the pool room. Can't really work. There's a whole bunch of coins scattered around. Hmm. Piled up there and hit the captain. We only have that much evidence that pertains to, like, the pile of stuff. Except for maybe... Well, no, not really. Not at all. What does the calendar say? Because I know if, if he's the witness, then the calendar has to come up at some point. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to go back to the beginning and just, like, press stuff here for a minute. Are you sure about the time you were in the staff room? What? Yes, I'm sure. I'm pretty good with time. I've never been late at work once. Hmm. If he's sure about the time, then there's something wrong with that statement. Let me take another look through the court record. Oh, hmm. It was actually Swiss Pearl's calendar around 10, 10 a.m. But wasn't that in the other room? Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna try this. Hang on a second here. Holy jeez. You say you were in the staff room, but is that really true? No, you were you were smooching with pearls, what you were doing. Of course it's true. Why would I lie about a thing like that? Mr. Rhymes, have you ever seen this calendar before? 
Hey, that's... Uh-oh. I see you recognize it. Yeah, that's the rifle calendar. It's a big hit of the Shipshape Aquarium gift shop. Thank you for shopping the Shipshape. Mr. Reed, please refrain from scattering fish around the witness stand. <laughs> really, though. Not to worry, your baldness. Taka will have them cleaned up in no time. <laughs> oh, man, so happy. I guess that bird comes in handy now and then. Alright, Mr. Wright, we have all seen your cute souvenir. Now, if you wouldn't mind... No, Your Honor, this isn't my calendar. It was originally the witnesses, but it came into the possession of a certain young lady. What? Yeah, that's right. You and your PR tricks. Mr. Rhymes and this young lady first met each other in the food prep room. After a mishap, their calendars got switched around. They ran into each other at about 10.10am 10, 10 in the food prep room. So clearly the witness was not in the staff room. In other words, there's no way he could have heard the voice in the pool room upstairs. The noise, I mean. <laughs> Arr, I mean, at least you got your pirate voice down. What's this? This is the first time hearing about any calendar. Yeah, well, it goes both ways, buddy. It's because Mr. Rhymes and Pearls were keeping it a secret. You lied to me. This transgression will not go unpunished. Arr! He's at that R, man. So, Mr. Rhymes, you didn't hear the noise of the equipment falling after all, did you? Okay, I admit it. I didn't hear the noise in the orca pool room myself. But somebody told me about it. Who told you about it, Sasha? Why does he not want to say? Is it because it would implicate whoever did know about it? Yeah. He's thinking. He heard about it. From Sasha. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. What is going on here? Hm. Now it's the trainer's own words that drive the orca into a corner. How do you like being bitten by your own client, right, don't know? Huh. <laughs> Certainly didn't see this coming. Yeah, this is bad. What perfect timing. But there was something I wanted to ask Miss Buckler about the orca. But since she ain't here, the prosecution calls the trainer Miss Sasha Buckler to the stand. Yes, I suppose it would be a good idea to hear what the orca's trainer has to say. What Sasha's gonna say? But I'll just have to meet it head on, whatever it is. Boy, they say head on a lot in this game, don't they? We will take a 20 minute recess while the witness is summoned. Oh, is that really that close? Jeez. No one often made a trip to Arby's, man. If I knew I was that close, I would just finish it out, jeez. Well, okay, uh, save. Uh, alright then. Let's continue on. And back in the defendant lobby. Here we are. Mr. Wright, are you going to cross examine Sasha? Guess I'll have to ask her about the noise from the stuff falling down. Uh, Mr. Wright. Mr. Rhymes, why did you lie? I, I didn't want Sasha to have to appear in court. I thought if anybody had to testify, I should be the one to do it for her. But why would you go to all those lengths? Because I love her, yo. Did you see the entry for the 20th on that calendar? Note about meeting the captain at the orca pool? Yeah, I found that calendar in the nap room. Oh, he's trying to cover up for her, isn't he? Guess it doesn't look like more of a woman's calendar than a man's. And it smells like fish, so further proof. I don't want suspicion to fall on Sasha. Mr. Wright? Mr. Wright. I gotta go back to the aquarium to look after the orca in Sasha's place. I'll be rooting for you on the other end of that TV phone. Please take care of Sasha. We're gonna, like, see something live on that phone that's gonna be crazy, probably. Okay, we can't let Prosecutor Blackwell get the best of us. Time to refocus! You're right. After all, we're the only ones who can save Orla. Orla. So crazy with that perfect ooh, Orla. Just ooh. Like oasis. Those two perfectly round heads on the cover of Rolling Stone that time. God, just so close up. 